long-term plans provide a vision while manifestos spell out how to achieve those visions in the shortest possible time. But it appears some manifesto promises were made without adequately consulting the private sector, and I've listed a few, one or two. Um, we've had in one manifesto increased maternity, increased, increased paid maternity leave. Um, who pays for the cost if you're a private sector employee and we increase your maternity leave? Do you think the private sector em uh, employer will be willing to pay for extended maternity leave? It's a good idea, but then some consultation would have to be done. In other jurisdictions, in the UK, government pays when you have paid extended maternity leave. In our case, who is going to pay? If you are not careful, we are going to marginalize women in employment because the employer will think, I'm not prepared to pay this extended leave and therefore I may not engage more women. So we need to have this dialogue, discussion with the private sector. Free SHS, brilliant policy, a very brilliant policy because an educated population is certainly better than uneducated population. So I will support free SHS at any time. However, we have some implementation or effects of some, some um, of the policy. We have private SHS uh, going out of business, and this is from the MS data. You've seen that 307 schools in 2016, 2017. In 2018, it has declined uh, to 247. So you can see whereas some are able to withstand competition, in fact, some are even growing, some private schools are being marginalized. So when you dialogue, you engage the private sector, you minimize some of these negative effects. Long-term plans have been costed and therefore can be implemented in a more structured manner. So linking the two documents will lead to coordination of manifesto debates by political parties, thereby reducing the incentive to make them less achievable. We don't just throw manifestos out there just to win elections. We have to look at the financing considerations or take financing into consideration. Some manifesto promises raise concerns about its relevance to the country's current economic indicators as a result of the effects of the pandemic. Now, we have an estimated budget deficit of 11.5%. Some are even predicting it might go higher. A GDP growth of 0.9%, debt GDP rate, rate of about 70, 67%. We are having revenue mobilization challenges. So, given all of this, if a manifesto is promising tax reductions, salaries to footballers, you ask, is that feasible? Maybe in the first term, no, but perhaps later when things improve. That is why we need to link our manifestos to our development strategies. It has to be realistic. Again, you talk about the CARES program, 70% private sector funding. The private sector is already struggling. Would government be able to get this 70% from the private sector? I think that is also something worth discussing. Let's link our manifestos to our long-term strategic Again, the big push, the big bang, the book push approach. Another good initiative, but the sources of funding under tax reductions with debt GDP ratio of 6.7%, economic recession due to COVID. So all of this remains to be clarified. That is why, again, we have to be careful with the way we craft our manifestos.